for Good class series. To learn more about this ongoing series, please visit TibetHouse.us. I think, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about the Kriya Samaja, the main unexcelled yoga tantra, father tantra. We talked a little bit about the Chakra Sambara, the main mother tantra. Then the Kala Chakra Tantra is in the subcategory of the mother tantra. Uh, but it is, its one uniqueness is that it's said to be the explicit tantra, the Shinto Salve Yu, the very clear tantra. Whereas the other unexcelled yoga tantras, they kind of hide something back. Like in the Kriya Samaja Tantra, Chandra Kirti, in his famous commentary on it called The Illuminating Lamp, he has a beautiful thing where he says that, first of all, in the root tantras, what are called the Vajra words of the root, hello, William, how are you? What are called the Vajra words of the root tantra, things are scrambled where you can't really understand them automatically what they really mean in the root tantra. I mean, they claim, clearly say that. So then second, there were the, one of the things that makes the Guya Samaja special is that there were five what are called explanatory tantras or Vyakya tantras, which were also taught by Buddha in commentary on his own root tantra. So he taught a root tantra with Vajra words, then Vajra word explanatory tantra, but with, in which things are still scattered around. So they're not all like in one place in, the, in that. And then the... Uh, uh, different commentaries, they sort of sort them out. And, but then finally, you have to have the direct precept of a guru, of a lama, uh, to sort of give you how to fit them all together. So there's like three or four stages of obscurity in the tantra. Hermeneutic that Chandrakirti explains, which are called the seven ornament system of, hermeneutic means theory of interpretation of tantras, there's a, which comes from India, not from Tibet. There are some scholars who think that the Tibetans made sort of Tantra obscure because they were all monks and that Tantra is really a big sexy thing and really, really weird, crazy stuff. And so the Tibetans wanted to still be good monks, so they made it all kind of like obscured, which is totally false. The Chandrakirti wrote in the seventh century in India this, uh, this changeover thing, you know, and uh, this complicated interpretational thing. And in that, Whereas in the exoteric system, the most direct explanation, let's say, of emptiness, rather than some hinted roundabout way of talking, of coming up with emptiness, is considered superior type of teaching, what they call definitive meaning teaching versus interpretable meaning teaching. But in Tantra, or then there's sometimes they call it intentional teaching, uh, teaching with ulterior intention or explicit teaching. So the one with ulterior attention is like the interpretable one, the lower one, in the exoteric system. But in the esoteric system, the one that is more obscure is the higher one. Whenever you explain it plainly to someone, that's a, like a lesser level that you're talking about. The ultimate level, you, have, you want to disguise what you're saying. You do it by hinting and so forth. So, I mean, they don't really say why so, but I say so the student has to figure it out themselves. And they have a feeling that it's more internalized there, the way they do it. And of course, that's because Tantra takes people to this level where they're encountering the fear of death, the fear of melting, the fear of dissolution. And when you do that, then you have to decide that you figure that out yourself. <laughs> and you want to do that, and you're ready to do that. You can't be feeling some authority is pushing you. Or you'll, you know, you'll recoil and you'll shrink up and freak out. You know? I, I mean, that's my way of explaining it anyway. I might be wrong, but I think that's the case. It's like when, in, you know, in the famous stories of Tilopa and Naropa, who are two of the most important in Guya Samaja, in Chakra Sambhara, and most of the Tantras. Um, you know, there are these 12 ordeals that Naropa had to undergo in his discipleship with Tilopa. And Tilapa would do things like, he would say, oh, look at the queen on that elephant. She really has so many beautiful gems she's wearing. If I had a real disciple, he would go and just take those jewels and bring them to me so I can give them to my girlfriend. Too bad I don't have any real, real disciple. 
So then Nanak, of course, runs over and attacks the elephant and tries to get the queen's jewels. And then the bodyguards of the queen beat him nearly to death. And then, and then the Tilapa comes up to him and says, no, but why, what are you, crazy? Why are you trying to steal the jewels from the queen? Who, like, what, what, what's, the, what's the matter with you, you know? And then he goes like this, and then he's totally healed. So there are these 12 times he did things like that. Oh, if I had a cycle, he would jump off the cliff here. <laughs> and now but jumps off, but then he heals him, you know. Uh, Dilopa does. <clears throat> and so they're a kind of symbol of the fact that to build a divine nervous system, you know, an open chakra, Kala chakra, chakra sambara, guya samaja, whatever, vajra yogini, he vajra, your nervous system, in order to do that, you kind of have to shatter your attachment to yourself as an ordinary, and having an ordinary nervous system, you know, I think is what they mean. Although maybe he was a hard case and he really did have to go undergo all these medical <laughs> triage things. So the Dalai Lama, by the way, he says, so therefore when you're a teacher and around in Tantra, you have to be very cautious. He says, especially I do, with all these hippies around here in Dharamsala. <laughs> he said, he said hey, if I said the real disciple would jump off the terrace here, some of them might jump off, he said. And he said, not only do I not have the ability to heal them just by passing my hand over them like Dilipa did, he said, but here in Dharamsala, we don't even have ambulance service. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great sense of humor, the Dalai Lama. Anyway, anyway, <clears throat> so, so Kala Chakra is supposed to be, its special virtue, an amazing thing about it, is that it, uh, it, um, it's the most explicit type of thing. And there are some very explicit things in the Kala Chakra. And in a way, the inner, you know, the, if, look, if you look at this. This video was brought to you in part with the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, please visit Tibet House U.S including invites to special trips to study Buddhism up close and personal with Robert Thurman during his annual geographic expedition trips. Trips in 2018 include Mongolia and Bhutan. To learn more, visit BobThurman.com.